Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Do you believe in Jesus? Jesus, the Son of God. from our lips, I want you to say it from your heart to him, that you believe that he's the son of God, that he came to die for you, that he's your savior, he's your redeemer, he's your friend, he's more than enough unto you. I want you to say it to him this evening. I want you to confess it from your heart to him, how much you believe in him, how much you trust in him, how much you depend on him, how much he is to you. I want you to say it to him. Oh. 
Jesus name. I would like us to ask the Lord to have mercy on us, forgive our grumblings, our murmurings, our complaints. If we believe that is the Son of God, if we believe that God gave his only begotten Son for us, we believe, we sing it, we say it, but do we really show that we believe the instances of doubt instances of fear i want us to ask that the lord should have mercy upon us and forgive us of those instances that our action does not go with the things that we say or we sing in our singing we say it in our singing we appreciate we acknowledge that he is lord but when the situation around us is saying something else we are following that situation i want us to tell him how sorry we are for our murmurings, our complaints, our doubts, our fears, our seeking help outside of him. And yet we say we believe in him. I want us to tell him how sorry we are this evening. Tell him how sorry you are. Not we. How sorry you are as an individual. The instances that you have expressed doubt, fears, Complaints, murmurings. I want you to tell him how sorry you are. of the instances of compromises all of the instances that we have compromised and yet we say we believe I want us to tell him how sorry I want you to tell him how sorry you are as we are praying the Holy Spirit will remind you of those instances of the instances that you have compromised tell God how sorry you are it's an individual thing. It's not, we are not, yes, we are here gathered unto him. But we are talking about the individual right now. That the instances that I have compromised you, Lord, I am sorry. Even when he's telling you not to take that step, you see, you went ahead to do it. And then at the end of the day, the thing flop. You, come, you run back to him merciful father that he is I want you to tell God how sorry you are instances of focusing on the storm instead of focusing on him. I want you to tell him how sorry you are. Because when our focus is on the storm, there is no way we will doubt him. If we, once we shift focus from him, we will doubt him. And so I want you to remember those instances and say, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry for those instances that I have looked at the stones instead of looking at you. The instances that I say one thing and then I mean another thing. I say one thing, then I'm saying another thing in my heart. I want you to tell God how sorry you are. Like we sang just now, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe. Is that the true position of your heart? God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth.
we say we are sorry, sorry means I will not go back there again. I am sorry I will not go back there again. I will not go in that direction again. That is, what, that is when it is sorry. That is when it is acceptable. He who confesses his sins and forsakes them obtains mercy. I am sorry I will not go in that direction again. I will no longer make the word of God of no effect. I know what the word of God says. And then I will add but. At the instances that I put but, what is that? Doubt. I want, to, I want us to enter into a covenant of no going back in that direction tonight. And there will not be any but to the word of God again. The word of God says it and that is it. It stands like that. No matter what the situation around me is saying, he's saying contrary, but this is what the word of God says, that is the one I am going to stand on. That is the one I am going to hold on to. The situation is very bad, but there is a song that is coming from within. That is God speaking to me, that is the one I am going to believe. That's the one I'm going to hold on to. And from tonight, it is a total turnaround. I, I, I will not say one thing and then mean another thing. It will correspond. What I'm saying will correspond with what is going on in my heart. God is spirit. And so communication comes from the spirit to the spirit. So what is going on in my spirit will correspond with what is coming out from my lips. I am sorry I will not go back in that direction of doubt anymore. I am sorry I will not compromise you again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we ask that you have mercy and grant forgiveness to every heart that is indeed truthful to you tonight. Everyone who has truly confessed and will not go back in that direction again. May there be pardon. May there be forgiveness. May the blood of Jesus wash the past away. And give us a fresh beginning with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace not to look back. We will appropriate from this moment. Our confession. We align with the confession from our spirit. In the name of Jesus. We will not say one thing and then another thing is going on within. God is spirit. He's seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. We ask, Lord, that you bring us to the place of true worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we will
would, we would be praying, we would be singing, however the Holy Spirit will have us do it this evening. But it's te- we are like pushing down from the Bible study on Wednesday. On Wednesday, the Bible study talked about absolute dependence on God. How do I arrive at that point? I just want to pick an aspect. I just want us to look at an aspect. And that is the aspect that will help us to pray, to sing. I want to look at gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude will help us. All of us know what gratitude is. So I don't know if I need to define gratitude. Being, being, I think it's the ability to show thankfulness, to show that you are grateful for something that has been done, something that you have, something that you can see. If we don't start from that point, we may not arrive at the place of absolute dependence on God. I left here on Wednesday. I was so excited. Why? Because I think that was the ministration in my own spirit. Seeing God from a grateful heart. I may not, the things may not look like what the next person expects. But if God, is going to, if God is able to take me to the place of being grateful for the life that he has given to me, it takes you back. Maybe sometimes to when you were even born. And then you, you will have reason to, to tell him thank you. And so if there are things that he has given you victory over at, a, at one point or the other, what is it that is presenting itself today that is making me want to doubt God or want to see God in a different light? So simply put, gratitude is my ability to be able to say thank you for the things that I, I can see, for the things that has happened to me, for the things, or maybe I should just simply put it, for my testimonies or testimonies of another person, testimony of my environment, testimony of nature, testimonies around me, the things that can make me say thank you. I should be able to express that thanks when I behold those things. He has not done it for me, but I've seen it in another person's life. That is why we share testimonies. When somebody says this is what God has done, when you are going through a similar thing, you should be grateful that God helped that fellow. If God has helped him through whatever it is that the fellow went through, the fellow could thank God, then the same God is available unto me. I think we'll be able to depend on him. If we learn to be grateful, if we show gratitude, it will help us to be, it will get us closer to God and bring our focus onto things that are positive. Not the negative side of it. Jesus, Peter saw Jesus and said, Lord, if you are the one, tell me to come. God say, come. And he started following. He was walking upon the water like Jesus was walking. But the moment he shifted focus from Jesus onto the storm, he was sinking and he had to shout again you see that is why the prayer we prayed at the beginning was very necessary sometimes god will say don't do it don't go in that direction just wait for me no we cannot wait i can't wait this thing is going to collapse on me and then we go in the wrong direction the thing that we were running away from will still happen where do we run to again back to the same god That is why that prayer, that initial prayer was necessary. So if we are able to express gratitude to God, we will arrive at a place of comfortably depending on him. 
if we arrive at being, if we are appreciative of what he has done, what I have, even the life that we have, if you wake up every morning and you are able to see beyond the situation around you, onto the fact that you are alive, and you are able to, and you are grateful for it, it takes you closer to God and make you see beyond the negatives around you. It becomes the energy for the day. If we are grateful to God, if we learn to be grateful at all, we will get closer to him and we will be more dependent on him if only we can arrive at that point. And so we are going to pray briefly and say, Lord, it's like my heart is mutilated by the things around me. And it's making me not to be able to see the things that you have done, the things that you are doing. I ask, Lord, for a new heart, a heart that is grateful, a heart that can appreciate you in everything. There is always a reason to thank God. Just in a, on a light, on a light mood. Uh, somebody sent a message to me. And I just read it. I said, ah, this is very instructive. Now somebody was drinking Gary. And the fellow was able to thank God for the Gary. And another person got Gary and said, is it because of ordinary Gary that you are thanking God? What if it was fried rice? What will you do? And as he finished saying that, he sat down to drink his own gari, but he kicked his gari by mistake, and the gari poured out. He was now able to look up to God. Can you imagine that? It looks very simple, very laughable, but can you see the, the reasoning in it? Ordinary gari. To him, it was an ordinary, it was ordinary Gary. And at this point, the ordinary Gary poured. He was now looking up to God. If only I can have even water at this point, as it were. The Gary you could not thank God for because it was ordinary. What is, what is it with Gary? You don't know that it's possible for somebody not to even have the Gary to drink. That was exactly what God was showing to him. So if we are able to see God in every situation, be able to appreciate God in every situation, then we will, our focus will shift from the negative onto appreciating him. So like I said, we are going to rise and tell God, I want a new heart. This heart is mutilated by the things around me. It has punch hole all over it. But I want a new heart. A heart that see beyond the things around me. A heart that is consistently grateful. Grateful unto you for even the things that I don't have. Because I don't have it, you have a reason for not making me to have it. I want you to tell God. Tell God that you want a heart that is grateful. The, the heart that is grateful will draw us closer to him. It, the heart that is grateful continually will shift our focus from the negative things onto him. I want you to pray. If you ask him, he will give. If you ask sincerely, God is going to give. It is communication from your heart to God. Now, God, this is the state of my heart. It is not right. Even sometimes I try to on the surface, just to appreciate you, we well, does not go deep. Because I have allowed the things around me to, to punch holes of negativity in my heart. Today, I ask for a new heart. A heart that is consistently grateful. If you ask him, he will give you.
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's read Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Okay, I think we would read from 31, sorry. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What can we say to these things? The things that distract us, the things that bring doubt, the things that bring fear, the things that bring tears. What can we say to them? If God be for us who then can be against us the problem is we, we most of the time we don't see the word of god for what it is and so we run into problems this is what the word of god says and then we, we start to add but when once the but enter there is a problem so he says he, who can be against us if god is for us 32 he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us what? Freely give us what? If he gave his son, why do we now doubt? And we believe. That song says, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. You are the son of... He gave his son. And we believe that. So why do we now doubt that he cannot give us all other things? Why? That is why we need a heart that is grateful. If he gave us his only begotten son, if he gave us Jesus, so what is it that he will not us, he won't give to us? Why will it now be difficult for him to give us all other things? Why? Why will it be impossible for him to give other things? But we believe that he gave his only begotten son, don't we? Do we believe that? So why don't we believe that he can also freely give us all other things? Why do we seek for help where there is no help? He wants us to depend on him for all other things. That is why the but we should remove. Yes, he freely gave us Jesus. And then he can give all other things. But the moment I put the but, I am doubting him. If I believe that he gave me Jesus, then why don't I also believe that he can freely give me all other things? All other things. We are going to pray again. We are going to pray. I believe that he gave me Jesus. Like I said, our gratitude will draw us closer to him. And it will make us to, to depend absolutely on him. You believe that he gave Jesus. Are you grateful for that? If you believe that he gave Jesus, why would you now think it is impossible for him to give other things? Why? So we are going to pray. Appreciate him for Jesus. 
appreciate him for Jesus that he gave freely. Appreciate him for Jesus that he gave freely. He gave his only begotten son. And I believe that he's the son of God. I believe that he died for me. I believe that he saved me. He is my savior. He redeemed me. I believe because the father gave. So why do I have the other side? I want you to express that gratitude and tell him also that, Lord, I believe that you can freely give all other things. My life up to today is given to me by you. It has been sustained by you up till this point. I was wallowing in sin. You gave Jesus. You gave Jesus to wash me from my sins, to redeem me. I accepted Jesus, I received Jesus, but I have shifted my focus. Because of the things, the mundane things of this life, the things that will be rolled someday, like carpet into fire, they have become my distraction. Lord, I ask for mercy. I believe, acknowledge again. I think you should, it's like a recovenant. We are doing a, a, a recovenant, we are recovenanting our relationship with him. By expressing the gratitude of his gift of Jesus to us. Appreciate him for Jesus. He gave Jesus to us. We came to him because he drew us. He saw us ruined and he saved us. The marvelous God. He gave Jesus. What else will he not give to us? He didn't just give us Jesus. He gave us the Holy Spirit by whom we are sealed till that glorious day. So why will all other things become a problem? Express your gratitude for your soul's salvation. Express your gratitude for the gift of Jesus. Express gratitude for the life that you have today. And that's why we can live and complain. What of the people that are gone? What of some of my mates that are in the hospital? Some as we pray are in the mortuary. Some are eating from the, the refuse dump. So why should all these other things now blindfold me from the love of God. Make me not to see that he can also give those other things. And now run after them. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for finding me out. Thank you for redemption of my soul. Thank you for bringing me to the knowledge of who you are. Thank you, faithful Father. Wonderful gift. It's my soul that is sealed till that glorious day. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The one who opened my eyes to see the things that are hidden unto men. Thank you for revelation of your word. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for giving understanding. 
He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for me, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things are in him. All things are available in him. All things. All things are in him. A heart that is steadfast on him, Lord, I pray for. A heart that is steadfast on you, Lord, I ask for. A heart that is focused on you, that depends absolutely on you for all things. For all things, Lord, no matter how small. All things. All things, Lord. All things. All things, all things, all sufficient God. A heart that see you as the all sufficient God I pray for. I ask for, I ask for Lord. I pray for in the name of Jesus. A heart that is steadfast. I like you to pray for such a heart that is steadfast. A heart that is fixed on him. He has the ability to give me Jesus. And so why will it be impossible to give all things? I want to depend on him for all things. I don't want to look to the left or to the right for all things. He is all sufficient. I want to be able to depend on him. Absolute trust on him. Give me such a heart, Lord. Give me such a heart. I want you to pray that prayer for yourself. Give me such a heart, Lord, that is steadfast, that is focused, that depend on you, that trust you, no matter what the situation is, whether it is small or big. Sometimes we think we can undo the small things. And then at the end of the day, we discover that we don't even have the brain to carry it. 
We need God all the way. We need to depend on him. All things. All things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We are going to sing him 522. I want you to sing it prayerfully. Oh, sing it from a heart that is indeed grateful. We are looking at a heart that is grateful actually. So let your heart be connected to what you are singing. Hymn 522. Me 
lead the singer of this hymn. This is a, a heart that is grateful. There are winding paths, but he was able to see God's hand leading. When we have such a heart, it draws us closer to God. You're able to see God in everything. I want you to put yourself in this hymn and express your own heart's gratitude to God. Let us pray. The instances that you would have been swallowed up. But the hand of God was stretched in your direction. You were not consumed by the thing that consumed others. Je Jesus led me all the way. I want you to express gratitude. Forget whatever it is that you are going through right now. And express gratitude to God for that which he has done so far. The things that would have swallowed others. But you were, God just somehow, somehow allowed the thing to scale you through. You passed through fire. You were not consumed by the fire. It is the leading hand of God. It is the leading hand of God. It's not because I am too good or I'm, too, I'm better than the, that other person. I want you to appreciate God for those small, small things. The instances you would have fallen into a ditch physically, not spiritual now. And somehow, somehow, you just discovered that something held you back. Let's not take it for granted. It is the act of God's faithfulness that we should be grateful for. It should draw us closer to him. It should make us see beyond the things that we are thinking he has not done. That if he could do this one, he would do that one also. The one who did not hold back his son. What is it that he will not freely give to us? I want you to appreciate him. Appreciate him. For the time that there was no food, but you had Gary to drink. There was some other person that did not even have the Gary to drink. The things that would have brought shame. But God somehow, somehow did not allow the shame to hit your door. It is an act of his goodness and his mercy. His leading hand. All the way my Savior leads me. Somebody is sitting down to say that. I have seen the leading hand of God. There are winding paths that I tread. He was there with me. Things that would have consumed me, he was there with me. He who did not keep back his only begotten son, he will give everything freely.
in Jesus name in Jesus name Psalm 100 Psalm 100 from verse 2 I would have said we should read from verse 1. But let's take it from 2. It says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord he is God. It is he who has made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. We did not make ourselves. Let it register. Let, let it sink in us. Let, it, let all of us put it inside of us. That he expects us to serve him with gladness. Why? Because he's the one that made us. We didn't make him. We are his sheep. So we cannot continue to serve God with grumbling, with murmurings, with complaints. You should serve him out with gladness. Gladness continually. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. It is fact that we must allow to, to sink in us, to, to settle in us, to, I don't know, to take a hold on us. I am is. I did not create myself, he created me. And so I am expected to serve him with gladness, not when it is sweet. Serve the Lord with gladness. Why? Why should I serve him with gladness? He says, come before his presence with singing. Continually you sing unto him. Why? Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. He made you. He made me. And not we ourselves. You did not make yourself. So we owe him that. We owe him that. Let us bear that in mind. Continually, we need to serve him with gladness. We need to serve him with gladness. We need to come before him. We need to build this kind of relationship, this kind of trust in him. No matter what the situation is saying. We need to serve him because he made me. He created me. He's the one that knows everything about me. The hair on our head, the Bible makes us understand that it is numbered. And none of it can fall to the ground without God knowing anything about it. So you see why you need to serve him with gladness. Not with murmurings, not with complaints. Praise the Lord. Now let's see what Habakkuk said finally. I think that is on the notes by which we are going to close. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 19. I think we read this on 17 to 19. We read it on Sunday. Okay. I would like us to read it together. I would like us to read this together. Please don't, don't, don't read it because I say you should read it. Read it because you mean it. Because you mean it. That from hence what this is how it's going to be. Can we go? One, two. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, Though the labor of olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, 
Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high heels. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to believe that that is not just reading. That we mean it from our heart. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to take this hymn in closing. Simply trusting every day. I think it's five. Okay, it's already there. Five. Uh, Five eight three sorry eight three six him eight three six because I already opened it. Simply trust in a Ah! Uh -huh. 
heart that is steadfast. A heart that holds on. Although the fig tree may not bloom up, and we hold on. Although there is no food in the house, and we hold on. Although the, the fees are not available, I am going to hold on. I am going to be steadfast. I will be focused on him. I will trust him that is all. I will depend, he's dependable. He's dependable. If he gave me Jesus, what else will he not give to me? He's all sufficient. I will depend on him. A heart that is steadfast is what I need, Lord. A heart that is steadfast. Lord is what I need. I see beyond the immediate unto you. Trusting you, that is all. Trusting you, that is all. That is all that is expected of me. Serving you with gladness. Serving you with gladness. Knowing that you are good. Knowing that you created me. Knowing that you have everything at your disposal. I just want to rest in your hands. The ability to rest in you. To continue to trust in you is all that I need. The grace is available. Help me to appropriate it. sufficient God you are trustworthy we have entered into a new covenant of trust of total dependence on you worshipping you with a heart that is grateful continually serving you with gladness not murmurings not complaints Holy Spirit of the living God we need you Help us, uphold us on this new journey. May we be able to see the way and follow. May the grace that is abundantly available, may we see and appropriate. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, O oh God. Holy Spirit, continue to interpret your word in our hearts. When the doubts and fears of life arise, prop up the words in our hearts to silence them. Thank you. We cannot thank you enough. 
for you have given us Jesus and you make everything available to us. We are indeed very grateful. May our hearts indeed continue to rejoice in you because we have you. Be exalted, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We are going to give our offerings. For fallen all, O Word of Jehovah, and it has Did you make yourself? Did you advise God what will happen to you in this life when you come? If you know that you, he, he made you and he, he, you are his sheep, then leave it. It is the owner of the sheep that determines what happened to the sheep. There is no sheep that will wake up and tell the owner, this is what I want to do. But I think we tell ourselves God gave us some brain. They that are led by the Spirit of God, who are they? Who are they? Not those who think that they want to lead God. In, we want to lead God. And I think I have gotten to a point that most of the prayers that are supposed to be wonderful prayers, they don't make sense to me. How did you arrive at thinking that you can instruct God what to do? Lord, this is what I want. This is how you do it. And whereas you know nothing about life. You can finish talking. Or as you are talking there, you die. Unto what? So let's change our style. It will be well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore.